Welcome guys, and are you ready for the cringe-worthy E3 conference? That's right, it's Ubisoft's turn, and uh, we're going to start off very cringy. So they started off with a stage performance. Uh, it started with a Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. And then these like dancers came in, but they're like all dressed up weird, because like, the video that was playing in the background was all weird. And it had nothing to do with the song, um, but this is obviously... For them to reveal, there's a new Just Dance coming out, Just Dance 2017. Um, this is no excitement for me. It's just like, whatever. I don't have a Kinect or... A, I don't even know if it's even on like PlayStation or anything. They didn't really say. But like usually it's on Xbox and it's usually uh, Kinect and so on. Excuse me. Right. So yeah, so that was very cringeworthy. Um, I don't understand why they do this every year. I understand they want to show off the game, but they don't have to do a giant stage performance. I mean, sure, I guess people like that, but it has nothing to do with... No one cares. The audience doesn't care. They're there for games. They don't, they don't care about the people dancing to show off the game. They care about the game, and that's it. Um, so, yeah, so that was very cringeworthy. Um, after that... Oh, also, before I move on, um, they did say it would be on the NX. So I guess the NX... Uh... Oh, actually, no. I've got notes saying it will be on PC and NX and uh, Xbox. So, um, yeah. So uh, the first thing ever to announce NX, or it will be on a NX, even before Nintendo even announced the console. Uh, so I guess we know it's now called the NX, though we already knew that anyway, didn't we? Um, so yeah, so that was interesting, but um, that must mean the NX has some sort of like motion sensor or some shit. Um, anyway, um, after that it showed uh, Ghost Recon and Wildlands. This was actually really cool in my mind. Um, so basically, it's just Ghost Recon. It, it feels kind of like uh, Tom Clancy's uh, Splinter Cell series as well. Um, basically, it's a co-op game uh, where you have to cooperate to do certain missions in this instance they showed gameplay and in the gameplay they had um, you hunt down a drug lord or I'm not sure if it was a drug lord but a drug maker, I, what do you call him? Chemist, a drug chemist there you go um, so they went and get him and it was all like tactical um, they didn't use voices from the game or anything, basically they had two people do voice acting for the game so it was like, okay, okay, we're we got some people here. Okay, okay. I've taken out the guards. Get the, the thing. I can't take this dude down. Oh, I'll go get the helicopter. Stuff like that. So, like, it was made me sound like a real, like, tactical conversation. Like, something that you'd probably get in war and stuff. But, um... It looks really cool. And one thing they noted was, um... That there would be multiple environments in this world. So, while I think they did a bad job because they only showed desert, really... Um, there will be like a rainforest, there's a giant lake, um, there's obviously the desert, and I, f I like this, I like how the game will take place over different environments, because that will change how you should be able to tactically interact with missions and enemies and how you approach stuff, it would be great, it would be great. Um, they also did claim that it was the largest open world action game that Ubisoft has made to date, so that that's only... Again, if that's really big and there's tons of environments, that would be cool. It kind of reminds me of uh, Zootopia a little bit, in a way. Um, no, but that's cool. Um, I can't wait to see that. That's going to be uh, really cool. Hopefully, um, it's a decent price. Uh, or they show more, so I want to pay full price. Because uh, at the moment, they just showed the desert. And while it looks really cool, deserts can be quite boring. You know, they're quite... Fagan, there's not a lot around. Anyway, moving on to one of the biggest things they showed, um, or in my opinion. So, South Park. Um, fractured but whole. So, this actually, I'm not a big... Actually, let me give a bit back to I like South Park. I just am not a big fan of it. I did not play Stick of Truth. But, I was watching Fractured but whole in... Uh, at E3 and it actually looks really cool so 
I I haven't played Steel Troop, but I know what it's about. So basically, you they're doing like RPG, Game of Thrones, so sort of, you know that sort of shit. Like it's just maybe like medieval. They're role playing. They go around town. They have this mission to be great, and there's like a war, like a role play war going on and stuff like that. But in this one, they've gotten bored of that game, and they've now moved on to superheroes. And I thought it was really cool because the way it's basically a continuation of the first game. They actually do a really good job of this because the player that you play in Stick of Truth is still dressed up at the beginning of the game to be in Stick of Truth. But then everyone's like, well, you're you're not worthy to be here in our secret layer or whatever because you're, you're not a superhero. And then they just showed him sitting down, uh, talking to Cartman, setting up his class. So it just looked really cool. Um, and it actually made me want to go play Stick of Truth now because I... I missed it because it was just one of those things where everyone hyped it up so much that I just didn't care. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. Um, yeah, that's all my notes for that, so that's cool. After that, the Division. So, we already know from uh, the previous conference. Um, there's a... Uh, expansion. Underground. Underground expansion. Uh, so that's expansion number one. But what they didn't tell you at the other conference is they have another one coming. What was it called? It was called Survival. Uh, and that would be Expansion 2. So not only will they have Underground coming out soon. In a few months time. I think it was around Christmas today. I, I forgot to not, uh, jot down the date so don't quote me on that. But around Christmas or something. Um, I'm pretty sure it was this year still. Uh, there will be Expansion 2. Uh, which will be Survival. So that would be cool to see. Um, I'm not really big into Division. I played it a little. It's fun. But I, I do I see myself buying the expansions? No. Not really. Um, unless it helps balance the game or I like bring life back to the game in general. I just don't see myself doing it. But they, did, they didn't really show a lot. They pretty much show basically you going around killing people in the underground or uh, you hunting for food and stuff. Which is pretty much a lot of what you do already in the division. Like you go around, you kill people, you get supplies, you you hold off the supply while the helicopter takes in the, in the dark zone and so on. Um, so I, I just don't know, man. I like if they're gonna have like a really, if you got the season pass, I, I presume it's included in the season pass, so it's fine. But it, I just imagine that's gonna be really a uh, high price DLC because it's uh, who is it? Yeah, it's a Ubisoft, yeah. I was, I, 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 we were talking about the Ubisoft conference. I forgot it was by Ubisoft. <laughs> How about that? Um, after that, they showed some more Eagle Flight. Um, eh. Eh. I don't know, man. Here's the problem with Eagle Flight, right? The problem with Eagle Flight is it's, it's not finished. And it was a really cool idea. So basically, it's a VR game. Where it's catch the flag and it's three eagles, first three eagles, and you got to get a rabbit to a nest. And the rabbit's the the flag, and the nest is the home point. Um, it looked cool. It's a nice concept. Um, as someone who does VR, it was disappointing for me to see that they were showing off a game that was very pretty, but the animations were unfinished. And I feel if the game doesn't feel natural. So basically, here's the problem. So, in first person, you see your beak, you see your wings, and when you're in the zoomed out camera, you can see your wings flapping, and you can see your, your nose turning and stuff. But when you're in that first person, basically the nose was stationary. It didn't even, like, twitch or uh, move left or right. It was just kind of like a sort of thing. And it just didn't feel natural. And then the wings, you can see a bit of the wings... And constantly, it's just like this. That's it. And I can assure you, if a bird does just this, they ain't going to be in the air for much longer. They're, I mean, it'll probably take a while to glide down, but they will not be going there. They've got to flap their wings. So um, I feel like it just needed a lot of work. If you're playing the game and it feels unnatural, then how is it meant to be an immersive experience, you know? I would highly recommend the developers to go study some bird life. Maybe uh, watch some of those Eagle GoPro first-person point of view like videos. See see what happens, you know. Um, but.
But if they improve that, you know, that actually looks like a very good game. And I, as a VR developer, I give them my support. Because uh, it's an interesting concept. I'm, I knew it was going to happen. Once they did the VR Warcraft trailer with the eagle, it was bound to happen. So, I'm sorry, I said eagle. It was a griffin, wasn't it? Um, after that, they showed some Star Trek VR. There's a lot of VR coming up, by the way. Actually, no, this is the last one. Sorry, VR, there's a lot of VR in the next conference. Uh, be ready for that. Um, so, Star Trek VR. This is really cool. So, a lot of people were insulting this because, like, no one, no one really cares about Star Trek these days, I guess. This was cool. So, they got the some of the original Star Trek cast on new generations and got them to do the game and that was cool and the game is essentially you are in charge of of uh, I can't remember its name I can't remember its name the ship I'm just gonna say the ship I do know the name I've forgotten this name uh, but yeah so it's just like the the ship and it's like you're on the control deck and it's like all right set so we need to fire at this dude so this dude, player number one has to do that. Or player number three has to manage the shields. And number four has to do commands. And number three... It's like a cult game. And it reminded me of a mobile game, which I can't remember the name of. Where everyone would have... There would be four players. I'm not sure if you can play with more. And each player would have a set of buttons or a set of, like, uh, commands that they could do. But then on everyone's screen, it would show commands for another player. So it really required teamwork. So I feel like this is just like a 3D version of that, or a VR version of that, and that's like really cool to me. That that's like really cool. I I just like that. It's um again VR is great because at the moment it's in that experimentation stage. People like me and other developers are trying to find new and innovative ways to get players immersed in their gaming experience. Uh, this is something that video games used to do back in the NES and SNES days. They were always trying new things. You don't really get that anymore. So it's nice to see that again, but on VR. So hopefully that leads somewhere, or it will lead somewhere eventually. Um, as we will see in the next conference where I will point some things out. Um, after that they showed For Honor. Very different from last year. So last year they showed the multiplayer, I think. And it felt very different. It felt more skill based, but at the same time, it felt unpolished. Because if you remember last year, I said that animations were quite shit. And they were. They've improved that animation, so that's good. This time around, they showed single player. Um, the concept's really cool. But I think the execution was quite bad. It just felt like it wanted to be like Dynasty Warriors, but at the same time, not Dynasty Warriors. Uh, but then it also wanted to be kind of like Rays from. A few years ago on the Xbox One. It was all over the place. Uh, but it was a really cool concept. So essentially it was like a civil. Not, not a civil war. But it was like a war between certain clans if you will. Uh, uh, Vikings, knights and samurai. Um, so the main focus was really between the viking and the samurai. But there was also knights as well. So there's like three things. And then there was also like a evil uh, f f fraction that was like trying to get them to fight. So like there was a bit where they were like tr they're like all backing up. And they're like, is this worth it? And then this dude just shoots an arrow from the distance, makes it look like one of the other dudes hit them, and then they go back to fucking war again. That was really cool. It was like this dude is an arsehole. They were about to have peace, and then you ruined that, you arsehole. But um, no, I really like that. And then it um, the gameplay they showed was. The Viking taking down the samurai by uh, t uh, invading their uh, fortress. So that was cool. Um, I feel like the gameplay still needs work. I feel the gameplay is very basic. It doesn't really know what it wants to be from my uh, point of view. So I really want them to just polish up the, uh, the gameplay a bit. But th that, the actual concept is really cool. And I like games like Chivalry and stuff. So they can get to work fine. Or they know what they get their heads in the game, and then it'll be fine. Um, after that, blah, blah, blah. grow home sequel. Uh, growing up, grow up. I don't care. Um, I played Grow Home. It's very pretty. It's not the most exciting of games, and by the looks of it, they only showed a trailer. It's pretty much the same. You climb up. You 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 go to those buds or whatever. And you make the things go out and hit planets and stuff. If it's just the same, I don't know if I can be excited for it. 
And considering I wasn't even able to get far in Grow Home 1, just because after you do it like three, four, five times, it's just, it's just repetition after that point. There's no other gameplay um, oh, besides getting the crystals. So, um, yeah, no, I just don't know how I feel about that. But they didn't really talk about it much. So there you go. There's, there, there's that. Um, after that, they did the same with Trials. They, they try to be like really cringe worthy here. They had, like two people come out in like weird costumes, like stripe, tiger, pink, orange, like costumes or some shit. Just very cringe worthy. They're like, they're, like you know, the, 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 the Ubisoft guys that are like really loud and like, yeah, let's do this and yeah, do that. And they were showing like this trailer for Trials Behind. But the montage wasn't very clear in what was going on. And. To be honest, uh, the bits that were clear were in like a buggy, not a buggy, like a an RC castle like thing. It didn't really look very skill based, so I'm worried. But um, I'm sure if they show proper gameplay, more fairy gameplay, it'll be fine. I just think they could have done a better job of showing it off. So that was kind of a disappointment because I'm actually a fan of Trials. Um, so yeah. After that, they showed a Ubisoft movie. Assassin's Creed. We knew it was coming. Um, looks really cool. I'm not really big into movies anymore because cinemas are just too expensive. So I might catch it when it comes on DVD or Blu-ray or something. Or if on the rare chance I go to the cinema, which is very rarely. But it looked cool. It felt like Assassin's Creed. Um, I don't. I didn't, I missed a lot of this part, so I don't really know if they talked about the story or anything. But it looked cool from the bits I did see. So. That's something, but really overall, it's a movie. It shouldn't be shown at E3, in my opinion. That's the sort of thing you show, like on the the show floor, maybe not not at a conference, because that 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 bit took maybe ten minutes, if that. That's ten minutes of time you could have to hype up a game, you know. And I know you're trying to hype up the movie, but people are gonna go see the movie regardless. Movies are much more popular uh, in viewing than games because while with games people wait until the price goes down most of the time or they get on release and then don't play it for a while and then they play it stuff like that where with movies they tend to go on release because it's only in the cinema for a limited time so I think people would have gone and seen this on screen even if they didn't hype it up anyway but you know hype's still good I suppose um, after that they showed Watch Dogs Pretty much more of the same of what we saw before. One thing I did really like that, like about this, is um, one. There's a cool side character. He's got like LED lights on his like glasses, and it shows different emotes depending on his feelings. So like he would have like the winky face, or like the he had like a wavy line and a fee at one point. It was really cool. I like that. Um, it kind of reminded me of how they try to do the in in um. Saints Row the Third, they had that dude with the the mic, and he had oh I can't remember it's auto tune. He had the auto tune like mic thing. It kind of felt like that. It, like they wanted the character which was had a gimmick, but at the same time was really cool to like just watch and interact with. Uh, I really like that. And they, basically in this one, um, they just basically showed more gameplay, and it was really cool. Um, they basically had him infiltrate an office and hack things. Um, they, they they did it in a very stealthy way. So, obviously, this time round, they're trying to be a bit more... They want you to be more stealthy in this one, is what I'm trying to say. And that might be good, because I'm a huge fan of stealth games. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I... Until I see proper gameplay, like, non-scripted gameplay, or, like, just a random person reviewing or someone playing the game and seeing how well it plays and how it pans out for them, I'm not sure if I'll buy this, because, obviously, the first one was a bit of a dud wasn't it so um, but this has got me interested in the series so um, hopefully they uh, do make this a great game and it's another great open world game that I can play because I like open world games as well lastly on their list though <coughs> lastly they had a new IP called Steep now they claim this was a new genre I don't consider this a new genre I consider this a mixture of genres not new, because uh, I call this a sports open world game. And that includes games like Fuel, which has already been done. And 
Uh, also, so basically this is a winter sports open world. I don't know how open. I assume it's limited because it's like on the mountains and stuff. Um, so I, I don't think it's as open what they probably claim it is. Um, and you can like just do tons of sports. You can be skiing in one moment and you can paraglide or basically you can just fluently change between sports and it's great. Um, there'll be like races and um, there'll be like missions and stuff like Hey, this dude just did a really cool jump over there and got tons of points. Do you want to go do that and beat him? Or, oh, hey, that dude's um, about to start a race. Do you want to join in? That sort of stuff. Um, so it does look really cool. I think this is a great uh, thing for sport games because it's, it's trying to be more open about sports. It's trying to be more, rather than limiting people to certain maps, which is more of a PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 sort of style way of doing things. It's trying to say, hey, we've still got all that shit that you do in the menus in other sport games, but you can just do it in an open world now. So it's like a giant hub, you know. And that's really cool. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. I can't remember. I can't remember what I was going to say. It was going to be really cool. Anyway, yeah. So no, no, that was really cool. Um, I just kind of wish they uh, um, weren't trying to claim it was something that it wasn't. You know. We're, oh, yeah. I was going to say. There was actually a PC game that's done this already. Uh, it's a free MMO called Powder Mountain. Powder Power. Or something like that. Uh, which is an open world MMO, but it's to do with winter sports. That's what I was going to say. So, oh, it's been done before. But this time it's by a giant studio publisher. So, or a giant publisher, so not studio. So, hopefully that means it'll be on a grand scale. It does look amazing. that uh, The fact that when you're skiing, like that you can make like a path in the snow. Uh, the, oh, something I did find that was unnatural. When the skiers and like snowboarders were going through the snow, there was no snow on the board. Like the, the snow would just like go left and right, which is a bit unrealistic. But that's the sort of thing they can finish off in polishing in the last stages, so it's not much of a problem. Uh, but no, it looked really cool. Um, I think I would have liked uh, to see a few more sports. They said there was a lot of sports, um, but they only showed about three. They showed power gliding, they showed wingsuit, they showed skiing and snowboarding. So four, and there might be another fifth one, I can't remember. But they said there was quite a lot more that they weren't showing. So I expect to see maybe 15, 20 different sports, you know. But the thing is, how many winter sports are there? Will they have like set areas for like tobogganing or uh, slaloms and stuff? You know, but will they have set areas for these really specific uh, things? Will they have like half pipes for like snowboarding trick shows and stuff like that? But... Um, they only really show mountains, so we don't really know. But one thing I did like, when they were going down the mountain, it seemed to get more populated by the world. So at one point, they're skiing down, there's like this little house with a car. And then when it went down, there was a few more. So I wonder if, like, down the bottom, it's very populated with, like, things. And then you have to, like, go up a ski lift to get to the top and do all this stuff. And that would be really cool. Um, but no, so that's it for Ubisoft. Um, overall, if I was to say anything, I was very disappointed. <coughs> they had maybe let's see let's count them so they had Ghost Recon they had South Park they had Steep three things I was actually cared about if if the others were more polished and were for, I really want to say I, I enjoyed watching For Honor but really for me it just felt like they weren't there yet. They've had like a year, two years to make this and it just doesn't look like... It feels like they nailed the problems from last year but then came up with new problems sort of like thing. But that, that's just development for you. But I, So basically, I only really cared about Ghost Recon's Wildlands, uh, South Park and Steep. They looked amazing but unfortunately because of this, I can't say it was that great of a conference considering three out of like, what, 12, 13 bits of news. Not the most sound, but hey, bonus points for Ubisoft for not mentioning Uplay once. At least I don't think they did. I didn't hear it, but uh, unless they mentioned it during the, the, the Assassin's Creed movie trailer, which I don't see why they would. Uh, but yeah, so this, so if I was going to rate them, so obviously because of this, I can't rate them very high. So I reckon so far my rating is EA, Ubisoft, 
Bethesda, and then Microsoft. So, even Bethesda beat out of this. Because Bethesda had like five, six things I liked. This had like three. But, um, don't worry though, because a very big one's coming next. And that is the Sony conference. Um, already watched it. Um, oh, by the way, guys. Apologies for this being so late. Uh, UK Times. Um, it was like two in the morning for like Sony and stuff. It's like, I wasn't recording back then. Um, but yeah, so, thanks for seeing guys. I'll catch you in the Sony conference later today. And don't uh, and expect a uh, Nintendo one at some point after it's uh, aired.